Okay. Good morning. Hope you're all doing well. This is Erev Yom Kippur. We're starting a third of the way down on Sadi Aleph Amid Aleph. We'll be learning most of the way down on Sadi Aleph on, on Sadi Aleph Amid Beis, um, and then we will uh, we'll stop. So the Gemara, a third of the way down, starts with Amar Mar Zutra Mishmedirav Papa, and he teaches us a continuation of our learning from yesterday about Ksuvas Benin Dichrin. And here's what he teaches us: Hilchasa, the halacha is as follows. That in the case where Ruvain married Rachel and Rachel died, and then Ruvain married Leah and then Ruvain himself died, says the Gemara, that they do in fact get Ksuvas Benin Dichrin. That's A. That was one, one thing that we learned at the very top of Tzad Yom Beis yesterday. And the Gemara is just confirming because yesterday we saw there's a machlok es tanaim about this topic, about whether or not there's ksubas bin indichren in this case, where Ruvain marries Rachel and Rachel dies, followed by Ruvain, Ruvain marrying Leah and Ruvain himself dying. The second thing that Marzutra teaches us is uksuva naases mosar lechaverta. So he's go, looking back at the three shmaminas from yesterday, and he's paskening like two of them. And the second din that he quotes is that uksuva is considered to be the mosar, is considered to be the extra, which enables the collection of ksubas ben indichrin. We had learned, and we'll see in the next the next mission of the actual Mari Makom for this, that in order for families to collect ksubas ben indichrin, there has to be at least a dinar of extra money, and we allow aksuba regular ksuba dollars that are set aside to pay for ksuba to count as those dollars. The Gemara says, Bishlama, I understand. I understand why Marzutra taught the first of his two halachos, that in this case, uh, Rachel and Leah's families would be able <laughs> to collect ksubas ben And the, had it been that he taught that, and velo ashminan ksuba na seis mosar lechaverta. Had it been that he only taught the first halacha and not the second, havamina iika mosar dinar in ilolo, I wouldn't have necessarily known about the extra dinar. So he was telling us that they, we needed this specifically to teach the second din of ksuba na seis mosar lechaverta. However, asks the Gemara, halfway down on Sadi Aleph Amid Aleph, Ella, why don't you just only teach us, Marzutra, the second of your two halachos? Lishmi'ina, you should teach us ksuba nases mosar lechaverta. You should teach me, yes, that ksuba counts as that extra dinar's worth of money to enable the collection of ksuba spin and yadana, and I'll know by reverse engineering, mishum de'achas b'chayav ve'achas b'moso, yishan ksuba spin and You taught me two halachos, but you could have been even more concise, Marzutra. You could have even only said that a ksuba counts as the extra money to enable the collection of ksubas ben indichren, and I then would have known that ksubas ben indichren could have been collected. Why, Marzutra, did you say both of these halachos, halacha number one, that Ruvain, in a case where he marries Rachel and Rachel dies, and then he marries Leah and then he dies, why do you first have to say the basic din of ksubas ben indichren, followed by the fact that a ksuba, the ksuba dollars count as the extra money to enable the collection of ksubas ben indichren. And the Gemara says, because Iashmin and Hachi, had it been that Marzutra only taught the second halacha and not the first, Havamina, I might have thought, Kigon, Shenosa Shalosh Nashimu Mesu, Shtaim Bechaya, Veachas Bemoso, that in a slightly different case where he had married three women, although I guess marrying a third person is not slight, but had it been that he had married three women, two of whom had died, and one who died. Uh, and then he died, leaving one left over, leaving the third wife left over. He and the Leah, in this case, the third wife, uh, gave birth to a daughter. But I might have inferred from there that I might have thought that maybe there would have been a battle of sorts. And therefore, says the Gemara, maybe we wouldn't have been able to collect Ksubas ben Dichrin. Kamash Malan, the specificity of the case that Marzotra taught was specifically to include the case of a husband that marries Rachel and Rachel dies, followed by him marrying Leah and then him dying, that those are cases where there's Ksubas ben Dichrin. We needed to be specific because otherwise we could have inferred incorrectly about that particular case. The Gemara at the second wide line on Sadi Aleph Amar Aleph gives us a new Mishnah. He's married to two women, to Chana and Penina, and then he and, and they died, and then he died. Says the Gemara, and they are looking to collect money from uh, uh, from the husband's family for their mother. But there isn't an extra dinar. It is the exact amount of money of the Ksubas ben Dichrin, Cholkin Bishove. 
So that's true. Even if wife number one brought as a dowry a thousand, wife number two brought five hundred as a dowry, and ksuvas ben indichon is a guarantee that the money stays in in the women's side of the family, and then the amount of money in total in the bank account, the assets for the husband and his yorshim is exactly fifteen hundred, not fifteen hundred plus a dinar, exactly fifteen hundred. Cholkin b'shove. Then they split the fifteen hundred total into seven fifty and seven fifty instead of one thousand and five hundred, which is really what the ksuvas ben indichon was. Now, oh, I know what's that. In this case, it doesn't matter because when there isn't enough money for uh, two ksuvas ben indichon plus a dinar, then we don't give out regular ksuvas ben indichon. Then we just split it like a regular yerusha. We're not even calling it ksuvas ben indichon anymore. It's just 1,500 divided by the number of wives. But in order to get ksuvas ben indichon, and that's the next line of this mission, a third line, hayasham mosar dinar. If there was an extra dinar's worth of money, then elu notlin ksuvas iman, elu notlin ksuvas iman, then the family that brought in 1,000 will take 1,000. The family that brought in 500 will take 500. If the summon would have said, anachnu ma'alim al nechse avinu yafe dinar, we're going to inflate the value of our father's estate by one dinar. This is very valuable for the family that brought in 500. Because, uh, for, sorry, for the family that brought in 1,000. Because remember that if there isn't an extra dinar, then they split the money equally. So the family that brought in 1,000 stands to lose 250 zoos because then it will be split. Even. So they want to say, well, actually, our father's estate is worth a, a penny more. It's worth a dinar more. So the Gemara says the reason they're doing this is ksuvas iman ein shomen lehen. We don't care about their assessments of their of their uh, of the husband's estate. That makes no difference at all. Ela shomen esanuchasim bebezdin. We look at bezdin, or I guess the equivalent would be the stock market or whatever. What? Yeah, we evaluate it in an objective way, not in a subjective way, for sure. And then the Gemara says, what about the following possibility? If there were properties that were going to come to them, let's say that there was a grandfather that was alive on his deathbed with a million dollars sitting in the bank with the Yerusha straight to the son who now died, which would be the extra dinar for the family to split. So what if the money is coming soon, but not yet? The Gemara says that doesn't count. That's not like you're holding on to it. Potential money isn't considered money as it relates to the extra dinar. It has to be not quite liquid cash, but it has to be. Uh, it has to be in this uh, in this realm. Reb Shimon Omer, Afilu Yesham Nechasin Shein Lemachrayis. Even if there was an extra dinar of property in the husband's property, however, it was Ein Lehem Achrayis. It was Metaltalin. It wasn't something upon which there could be a lien. Einan Klum. That's a big chumra. That's very strict. That means that the husband has to have two ksubos plus a dinar's worth of physical property, not just metaltalin, not, not the tangible, movable things, only things upon which there is a lien. That's a big chumra. And that means that the family that brought in a thousand they, this guy could literally own a thousand expensive computers. It doesn't matter. It's not. It's not metaltalin that counts for a dinar. It's only karka things that have a lien that's upon them. The Gemara opens eight lines from the bottom. Tanu Rabbanan lezu elef lezu chameshmeos. If this was the case, I had kind of foreshadowed. I didn't realize I was doing it, but apparently I did. <laughs> In my head, the numbers were there. If there was a thousand for one and five hundred for another, mosar dinar, If there's an extra dinar, great. Then both of the families get to take back what's rightfully theirs, as was structured in the ksubas bin indichrin, that everybody gets back what they brought in. Bim And if not, they have to split it seven fifty and seven fifty. Says the Gemara Pshita, we could understand the following din. Meruben Vinismatu. If at the time of death the estate was valued as two ksubos plus one dinar, but then the market dropped by the day of collection, so now it's not valued at two ksubos and one dinar, it's valued at two ksubos minus a dinar or whatever, but it's no longer, let's call it 201. Now it's 200. Doesn't matter. We look at the time of death. We go back to the portfolio status on the day of death. That's when we make our assessment about whether or not there's an extra dinar to collect the ksubos been indifferent. Based on the date of the death, when the portfolio was valued at two ksubos plus one dinar, that's when we make our establishment. What about muatin v'nisrabu mai? Let's say on the day of death, it's muat, and then the, then the value goes up. Would we look at that differently, or do we still only look 
myopically at the day of death. The Gemara says, Toshma, let's see. The Nixay the Bay Bar Tsartsur, this is a family's name, Mu'atin Vinis Rabu Habu. That's exactly what happened by them. It was only valued at 199 on the day of the on the day of his death, or to 299, whatever the number is. And then two days later, there was a big boom in the market and they they made a killing. So then the Asu the commander of Amra, Amr Lahu, Zilu, Paisinhu, and Lo Ashkehu, you need to pay out your half. It's only halves. You don't get the whole thing. Just go pay out. And the and the family didn't listen. Lo Ashkehu. Amar Lahu, Ilom Lahu. If you don't pay the half that you need to pay, or if you only take your half, Mechinu Lahu, I'm going to punish you. I'm going to hit you. Besilu de lo mava dama. I'm going to hit you with a thorn that doesn't cause for bleeding. This was the metaphor of the day for uh Cherem. For excommunication, because if there's a thorn, there's no blood, no physical pain is what the Gemara is referencing, but there is going to be emotional pain, which is, of course, Cherem. Shadrina Lakame de Rav Nachman, and then he threw the case to Rav Nachman because Rav Nachman was in charge of the Bezdin, and Rav Nachman was the one who could enforce the actual Cherem. Amar Len, he said to them, Kishem Shem Ruben Benismatu, just like the din is that when the market is high on the day of the death and it lowers, we only look at the day of that of death. And on that day, Zahu Bahen Yorshin, that's when they get to, uh, they get their fair share. They get rightfully what's theirs in regards to the Ksuvas and Dichern. Kach, the same exact thing is true in regards to Muatim Venisrabu, Zachab and Yorshin. Whatever it is, it is. You don't get to choose. It's not up to you. You don't get to choose. Whatever the market value is on the day of death, whatever the estate is evaluated at on the day of death, that's when we determine whether or not Ksuvas and Dichern is given out in equal portion because there isn't enough money, or it's given out as per what they invested based on the, again, all based on market value. The Gemara then gives a, gives a simon, Elif, Umea, Mitzvah, Biksuva, Yaakov, Zakaf, Sadosa, Bidvar, Maskina. Today we're only going to talk about two of these, the Elif and the Mea. Uh, oh, and the Mitzvah. I think Elif and the Mea. Which one was the third one? Yeah, Elif and the Mea. We'll talk about these two, and then over the next many days, not Yom Kippur, then we'll discuss the others. These cases run pretty quickly, and then we'll stop about 10 lines from the bottom of the page. Ahu Gavra, there was a man, Dahabu Maskebe Al Fazuza. He owed someone $1,000. He happened to also have Havalhu Treapadne. He had two mansions. So, what did he do? He sold his two houses. Each of them was 500. He sold them to a third party. So, he, Ruve, owed money to Shimon. He sold two mansions to Levi. Shimon went to Levi and he said, I want my property. This Lukuchos, this guy owes me money. You can't do that. Asa So Shimon goes over to Levi. Tarfa He goes over and says, Hey, you didn't realize this, but Ruven owed me money. I'm taking mansion number one. Hadar Katarif He was on the way to go take over the second mansion. And then Ruven came over and Shakal Alpha Zuze Azil Gabe. He took a thousand Zuz in cash and walked over to Shimon. And here's what he said. Omar Le. Ishavi Lach Alpha Zuza Lachai. If you are willing to view your five hundred dollar mansion, your five hundred zuz mansion, as a thousand, then no problem. However, the elo, if you're not willing to view that first five hundred dollar mansion or five hundred zuz mansion as a thousand, then what I want you to do is give that house back to Levi that I sold it to, and alpha zuze the elo, then shakil alpha zuze, then take a thousand in cash for style. I can get out of my hair. So he's saying, I don't want you to take both houses from them. You can take one and, and it'll, it should be equal to a thousand. I'm negotiating. And then if not, then give the house back and I'll give you a thousand in cash. So you can choose. So Sava Rami Barchama He says, that's our Mishnah. What did we say about our Mishnah? We said, you're not allowed to mess with market values. So it says the Gemara, maybe we should say, The family wanted to say, no, really, our father's estate is Tuxu is plus a dinar. You can't do that. So too over here, you can't inflate the cost of the house from 500 to 1,000. Not allowed to do that in this negotiation. Says the Gemara, not a good comparison. Amrle Rava. Nope. So the Gemara is saying that in our Mishnah, just like you're not, the family's not allowed to inflate their own property, so too Ruvain, he's doing the same thing. And that's the next part of the Gemara. The Gemara says, me dummy. Amr le Rav, me dummy. Are these two cases really comparable? Our Mishnah, where the family's trying to inflate the cost of the of the husband's estate versus this case where Shimon, Levi can, Shimon can choose what he wants. He can choose. It's, it's his own decision, like you were saying. Me, dummy. Hasam islip say the liasme. In our Mishnah, when the family that's owed a thousand inflates the estate numbers, they benefit and the other family loses out. Instead of the other family getting 750, now they're only getting 500 because we lied about the dinar. But hacha, me, sub Here, there's no loss at all. So says the Gemara, 
Alpha Yahiv the Alpha Shakil. He agreed that the house is a thousand. Nobody's losing out. Why can't we do this? Says the Gemara, fine, we allow it. However, the Tirfa, Kama Kosvinan. Tirfa is a star. A Tirfa is a star that if I, if Shimon owes Ruvain money and then Shimon sells a house to Levi, that Shimon can go to Levi to the Lakuchos. So then when he does that, Levi says, hey, I'm out money. Shimon just came to collect it. So what we do is we write a star that says, Levi says, Shimon just took property from me, Ruvain. You need to pay me back. You pay, you gave me a property that had a lien on it. You're 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 a terrible businessman. Give me back the money that you owe me. How much do we write on that star? Ravina Amar be Alpha. Whatever Shimon agreed to, the thousand. And Ravavira Amar be Chamesh Meos. The Hilchasa be Chamesh Meos. The halacha is that the star Tirfa only has five hundred on it. And an identical story. So we'll move through this very quickly. Identical story, just with different numbers. Third of the way down. Sadi Aleph on Beis. Hau Garva da Hau Maskebe Meazuze. There was someone who owed $100 and he had two small patches of land. He sold one for 50, he sold the other for 50, but he sold them to Levi, he sold them to a different person. So Shimon went over to him, Shimon went over to Levi and says, I know that, that Reuven sold you that property, but he shouldn't have because there's a lien on it and he owes me money. And he went over and he took one of the $50 properties. He was about to go take the second one. He took 100 zoos to pay him back. And he went over to Shimon and negotiated. If you're going to take the, the small $50 property and treat it as 100, all is well and good. The ELO, but if you don't, then take 100, return the property back, and then you'll make more money taking the cash. I suggest you take the cash. Says the Gemara, from here, the same exact inference. Savar of Yosef, Lamemer, Hainu Masnison, that that was our Mishnah, that just like our Mishnah says, Im Amru Yisomim, that the estate of the husband was greater in order for the, for the Ksuvas bin Indichan to be greater. We don't listen to them. <laughs> maybe over here we should have the same concern and we shouldn't listen to this negotiation where the property of 50 is actually 100. Amrli Abai, me dummy. These are not the same thing. Hasam in our Mishnah, Isla Hoop, say the Liyasme. When you lie about the husband's estate, then what you're doing is the family that really deserves more is that really deserves equal is now getting more, and that's not fair. But Hach over here in our case might say the Isla, may you have may shakil. He agreed. Shimon agreed. He he if Shimon agrees, so the, that's his own loss. Nobody else is losing out. He would rather have the property. So for him, it's worth it. We make decisions like this all the time. I don't want to drive further. I'm gonna drive closer, but spend more. We do make decisions like that all the time. It's up to me to choose that. Nobody else is losing out. Thousand to five hundred or hundred to fifty in this case, same thing. So let him choose. And the Gemara seems to say that that's okay. Same question again. Vitirfa. Vitirfa bekama kasvina. How much is the star tirif that's given to Levi so that Levi can go back to, to Ruvain and say, hey, you sold me a property with a lien. How much can I collect? Same machlokas, different people. Ravina Amar Bemea. No, same people too. What's the first one, Ravina? Yeah. Ravina Amar Bemea. Ravavira Amar Bechamshin. Ravina says the amount that Shimon agreed to, which is that the property, which is 50, is now 100. Ravavira says, no, it's only 50. Bihilchasa bechamshin. What, um, we have to stop here because I have to start chakras. We'll pick up right here, two thirds of the way down um, on Thursday night. Wishing you all a beautiful davening, a gemar chasimatova. Should have a year where all of your tefillahs are answered. Gold to gemar chasimatova.